What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another week here at Revent Builds. This episode is going to focus solely on Boat Dock Alpha. A lot happened over there. We get in our steel pan and then we pour the concrete for the upper level deck. Some amazing stuff. We pour on a spooky Halloween. There's fog on the lake, there's energy in the air, and there's much more than that. Let's get into the video. What's up, guys? Welcome back. We're at the billion dollar bitchin' boat dock. We're having a great day. We're obviously standing on the upper level. We're setting our metal pan deck today, getting ready to place our concrete deck. Looking really cool out here. I mean, look at the view. Look how high up we are. This is this is a good day to be on the lake, for sure. Our steel erectors have finished all of their erection, all their burnout, all the welds are done. The last thing we have to do is put our metal pan deck in. And what the metal pan deck will do is support the concrete that goes on top of it. So we'll put some rebar in here, just like we would a slab on grade, as well as a couple other things, uh, some MEP items or electrical conduits and things like that. We'll go right on top of this deck. We'll fill this up with concrete and we'll have a nice little uh, four inch thick pad that will support our second deck. This material is really easy to work with. It's essentially like a tongue and groove system that you would use on like a metal roof, kind of like a, a flooring material. And they just end up stacking one on top of each other and putting them right on top of their joists. The pan decking is really just like the bottom of our formwork for the concrete. And you're saying like, why would we put concrete on an elevated surface? Why not just like lay it on the ground? Well, two things, this is a forever boat dock, right? We want this thing to last a really long time. And concrete is a great way to make sure that our secondary level is really sturdy. It also provides a really good layer of protection for all of the wood decking below it. So it's kind of like acting as a roof almost for the wood decking below it, which is really cool. Pan decking is usually used in more of like a commercial setting. You don't see it a lot in residential projects, which is really cool to kind of like be exposed to this. Some of the questions that we often get asked by clients or installers or engineers are like, how do we attach this to the system, right? What we have on our project is what we're calling a closure plate. And this closure plate is really just a six inch piece of L angle welded on to the foundation or the frame uh, below it. And you can see how our sheets are cut to fit and it just butt right up into our closure plate. When we load our concrete on top of this, it's gonna get really heavy and just kind of weigh this thing down and the concrete will be pushed up against this closure plate and this thing is not going anywhere. So this is a pretty thin slab. It's about four and a half inches, but what we'll actually end up doing is running our electrical conduit for the lights below and our outlets up here through the deck. So we'll have small conduits running through the deck where we can have our junction boxes or our light fixtures already pre-wired to. That way when you come up here at the end of the project, you won't see any of these like exposed conduits or like pieces of metal running on your ceiling and all it looks really, really clean. Before coming to Revent, I used to work in a commercial setting and we use metal pan decks a lot. There's some fun or not so fun things about metal pan deck in Austin. So right now, I mean, this stuff is, is pretty warm to the touch, but you can imagine if we were in the middle of summer, this stuff would be like baking anything that's put on it. Often what we would do is we'd come down here like the night before or in the morning before a placement and actually hose this down with water to kind of like keep the surface from overheating. If it overheats, it can kind of like take your concrete and bake it from the bottom and end up like curing too fast or causing cracks in the bottom, uh, which you don't want. It's just really cool to see such robust systems used on a home, very cool. Every time I come out here, I see progress that happened over like three, four, or five days, right? I hit a job site once a week and this, This... <laughs> this boat dock is just so big. To think that you can have two 25 foot long boats here, you know, with a grill and a bathroom and an upper level, I mean, this thing is just, it, it's pretty sweet. Hey gang, John here, checking back in, just seeing if you've tried ends yet. I'm telling you, the stuff is good. 50 milligrams of caffeine. You're dragging in your day. You want to get a kickstart? Try it out. And look, 
If you want to start off a little more lightly, go for the Focus Blend. Packed with nootropics will keep your mind sharp as a tack. Take it from me. I was an energy drink guy. I was getting the bubble guts. I was just pounding fluids all day. I'm trying to sit here and work. I got to pee every 30 seconds. Now I'm just tossing in pouch after pouch. It's keeping me going without the sugar and without the crash. If you've been following the channel, you know I am not one to blow smoke. I am telling you, ENZ is the real deal. Go ahead, give ENZ a try. I know you will love it. Go to ENZPouches.com, put in promo code JGB and get your 15% off. So after the installation of the steel pan deck, our concrete contractor is gonna go in there and get our rebar mat in. You guys have seen this across all of our other foundations. It's very similar. In this case, the bottom is just the pan deck and not the grade beams or the top of grade. So after they get the steel rebar in, they're gonna get these dobe bricks, they're gonna put them under to keep that rebar mat from just sitting at the bottom. We want it right in the middle of that pan. Then our structural engineer is gonna come out, he's gonna inspect it and give us the all clear, and then it's pour day on this foggy, spooky Halloween. It is a bone chilling 40 degrees in Texas temperature. This is bad, y'all. I know you're from all over the world, freaking North Pole, South Pole. Here, 40 degrees is rough. It will warm up later in the day, but we're out here, our fingers are cold. I don't really have good winter gear, so we're just trying to make it through. Concrete on second stories is commonly used in commercial settings. Here, we are using it for longevity. Remember, this is a forever boat dock. This thing is gonna outlast all of us. It is here for stability. It is here to be weatherproof because of all this humidity and moisture. And this thing is gonna wanna rock around. As far as concrete pours go, this one is going to be pretty simple. I think it's only about two trucks today and we're gonna knock this one out probably here in the next five hours or so. All right, dude, what time did you get out of here? We have been out here since about 6.15 this morning. Okay, what are you doing? We've got a couple things. Concrete is today. Um, we had a couple little minor things we needed to clean up before that started. Our conduit for our upstairs fan. We want to make it clean. We don't want any of this to be showing on the columns, on the exterior. Whether it was miscommunication or whatever it was, our electricians did not go through the column, they just had it up against it. So all this conduit would be showing. So what we did was we went and bought this bit that apparently drills through steel. Um, it hasn't been going great, but we're kind of getting there. So we're gonna just run this conduit through the column. So you can't see any of it when uh, the concrete is set. And that's pretty much what we're doing right now. <laughs> so the hole's in. I'm just making some adjustments to the conduit. That's for the power. The other one is we will have a little like patio bar up here. So we'll have like a grill and a sink and a little refrigerator. And our plumbers have everything roughed in below, but they needed what we call a sleeve through the deck to pass their sanitary line through. So when you wash your hands, you have your wastewater come through. They need a place to put it. Um, we use sleeves and decks a lot just to like feel like this is where things can go in the future, but it's not permanent right now. Here we are at our lower level footing. So we talked about the concrete can deck and the reinforcement up there, but actually what we'll have down on our lower level is a footing for one of our columns. What this will be is our stairwell. Our stairwell has a landing and that landing will have one main hall supported and our existing slab was actually only six inches thick and our engineer determined that we needed our footing to be deeper to carry the weight of that column. So we ended up cutting out the slab, going down a foot per the structural detail, adding in some rebar, and then making just a little thicker here so we can set our column on here and it'll be nice and sturdy. This is our trench for all of our electrical and plumbing. Our plumbing is actually below this. We're seeing our electrical conduits on top. Everything's running underneath. You see our sanitary line stepped out here as well as a fodder line. This boat dock will have not only a bathroom, but a little kitchen on us. So we've got water for our sinks. We've got a sanitary line for like our sinks as well. 
and then conduits to provide power to our boat lifts, our lights, our receptacles. You know, we're just trying to hide everything and make it look super clean. So instead of having this run over ground, we're actually gonna bury it in the trench. So right as we were getting going, the freaking line pump backed up and we were all biting our nails. These moments can be very tense. When you have this long of hose, it can just be tough. When you think about, you know, each section is like 10 or 20 feet long. We have 400 feet of hose. So there is just so many instances where things can get wrong. And some of the aggregate in the concrete, if it's a little bit thicker, it can start clogging that pipe. And if it's clogged, we are toast. I mean, you have all that concrete that is literally just wasted. If they can't use it on another job, you just eat the cost. They have to go dump it. It was like really clogged and the guys were trying to get it unclogged. They're smacking it with hammers and the pump is off. So you can see they were using a metal two by four. That's about 10 feet long. That's the screed with all that pressure built up in the line. We have to pop the collar off. So he pops it off and boom goes the dynamite. I mean, that kind of stuff is just exciting. And then thankfully we did not have another clog for the rest of the day. So normally in this situation, if we use the pump truck with the boom pump, it'd be super easy to get it, but there's not enough space. We can't get the boom pump by the houses down the yard. So we have to use the line pump. But as you can see, we're working it out. The concrete's flowing. Let's go. So to reiterate why this is concrete, because it's literally sitting above water. If you put any sort of wood here, it will last to a degree, right? In probably a year, that humidity is gonna start rotting that stuff out, even when you use pressure treated. Now, you can use synthetic joists, but they're not that strong. We wanna minimize the use of synthetic joists. We use that down on the dock, but up here, we need strength. We need stability. Remember, this is sitting on a lake bed. So, we have stability from our piles, from our steel structure, and then this concrete deck is gonna last forever, and it's also gonna be strong as hell. So, there is a large added complication when you're pouring concrete over a lake, especially Lake Austin. This is all a very highly scrutinized environmental zone. We cannot get concrete into this lake. Neighbors will call the city on us. The city literally drives up and down the lake on boats. You can get your whole job shut down. You can get fined and not to mention, you just don't want to be an asshole and pollute these beautiful waters, right? So we have to be very careful not to spill concrete over the edge of this pan. If we were doing this on the ground or a different site, that literally doesn't matter. So think about they're up on this high level, second story, they're pushing all this concrete around, brooming it out, and they gotta be super careful with it spilling over the edge. So this is just like precarious situation and you gotta be really careful while you're doing it. What's happening is the concrete starts setting and then you'll see the guys walk out there with those long screeds. It's like a long level. It's just a metal two by four and they're just gonna flatten it all out. They're gonna kind of tamp it. They're gonna kind of play with it. And then they drag that screed over and they're just getting it flattened. And that's just rinse and repeat. And honestly, compared to some of the pours that you guys have seen with the million dollar pool, even over at the Zen Den, I mean, this thing is cake. But remember, you're pouring concrete 10, 12 feet up in the air. This is way more difficult than doing a foundation on the ground. Imagine if that pan is not installed correctly and you had it bust. I mean, that would be absolutely atrocious. Not to mention all the money that was lost ruining all of our pre-placement structures and like the rebar, the pan deck, the environmental concerns. I mean, you gotta be careful with this stuff. And obviously we're pros, we knocked it out. I appreciate these guys so much. Now up my favorite tool, La Mapa or the Bull Float. It is a really cool tool that is kind of like it has a squeegee feel to it. It's a long plate that is attached to a pole with a chain. When you twist the pole one way, it tilts the plate up when you're going forward. Then you twist it the other way and it tilts it down when you're going back. And this really helps smooth out the concrete. This is what's gonna get it like really nice and level. Up next, we're gonna get all of our framing in. So there is a storage shed below with a bathroom. We have an outdoor kitchen. We have the roof section, then that'll get roofed 
Then we're gonna get GM bros and the steel guys to come out. We have a steel railing around the whole thing. We have some awesome steel stairs and we have some beautiful decking. But then something I'm really excited about is we have some awesome Proteus hydraulic lifts. This is where we build in a deck with a slot for the boat and the hydraulics lower the whole deck into the water and then they pick the whole boat up out of the water super custom stuff more to come on that again i appreciate all you guys i will see you on the next one i love you i'm out